Hey, how you doing, everybody? Stanwell, Bulldog, Pegasus. Another great clencher uh, from my collection. So uh, I wanted to talk about some of my family's Christmas traditions. And uh, I'll be jumping around while it comes to me. As you know, I do my videos off the cuff. Nothing fancy here. What you see is what you get. Anyway, some of my family's traditions. Now, my dad, my late dad, was born and raised in Wales, Great Britain, came to this country in 1952. My dad uh, had a large family. He shared a bedroom with four brothers, and uh, they were quite poor. Uh, my dad's dad worked in a tin mill, and my uh, dad's mom, my grandmother, took in washing from the uh, wealthy uh, people in the town down the road. So they were quite poor. My dad didn't get much for Christmas. He'd get a, a tangerine, a piece of chocolate, maybe a pair of socks or a pair of underwear, maybe a... Uh, ball one year he got a cap gun yeah he got a cap gun and thought it was a million dollar gift now my mom on the other hand her mom and dad were from wales but my mom was raised and born in aliquippa pennsylvania a steel mill town her dad had a great job he was an electrician in the steel mill aliquippa jones and lachlan steel mill uh, they were a very popular steel mill in the East Coast. Well, there was one in Cleveland, three or four in the Pittsburgh area, and Aliquip was not far from Pittsburgh, and he made a decent living. So my mom always had nice Christmases, unlike my dad, gift-wise. So my dad, my mom used to get in arguments about what my sister and I, I only have, I only have one sister, what she and I would get for Christmas. My mom would get us a lot of gifts and my dad would think one or two would be sufficient, but my mom always won on that, on that. Uh, Christmas stockings, we did it like the British Owls, the Scots, the Welsh, the English, and the Irish do. We put our stockings at the end of the bed. And when we woke up, the stockings were filled. So uh, that's one of our traditions. Now, I have to light this. I'm sorry. Never fails. Why is that? Always goes out when you're doing a video. So some of the food traditions... Uh, Christmas Eve, we had a ham. My mother would make the ham, homemade, doctored up baked beans, you know, with diced onion and uh, scallop potatoes, the real scallop potatoes, not the au gratin with cheese that came around in the late 70s. She'd make the ones with the real whole milk and the big, thick, round slice onions baked in the oven. And that's the only scalloped potatoes I'll eat to this day. And they're hard to find. Usually in the boxes, they are the uh, au gratin, the cheese ones. We would have that Christmas Eve. We'd go to church after dinner. And then we'd come home. And uh, we'd have, you know, some snacks for Christmas Eve. Chip and dip, pop, soda, whatever part of the country you're in. And uh, my grandmother, my mom's mom, was a widow woman. She was widowed at 55. And she and her mother, my great-grandmother, would spend the night over. They'd get here about 12 o'clock Christmas Eve on the 24th, help my mother cook, and they would spend a night. So uh, they were always here, which was nice. And Christmas Day, we would have a turkey, you know, with all the fixings, with sage and onion stuffing, like the British do, the English, Welsh, 
Scott's sage and onion stuffing, mashed potatoes, uh, rutabaga, which I hated, and they would call it Swede because over in the United Kingdom, rutabaga was called Swede from the Swedish people. That's what they called it over there. They still do. Swede. I didn't like it. And we'd have that in Brussels sprouts, buckets and buckets of gravy, heat them and heat them serve uh, dinner rolls. That was Christmas Day. Well, my dad was a steel worker also and worked in the uh, J&L Steel Mill in Aliquippa. And he worked three shifts. So you never knew what shift my dad was going to be on for the holidays. It could be daylight, which was, I believe, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. It could be 4 p.m. to 12 midnight or 12 to 8. If dad was 12 midnight to 8 a.m., uh, we weren't allowed to go into the living room and open our gifts when we were little, or even as teenagers, young adults, till he got home at about 8.30 in the morning. You know, kids get up early on Christmas, right? So the anticipation was there. We had to wait. Uh, we were allowed to open our stockings, but then we had to wait for Dad because Dad would have the Kodak camera, the Instamatic, and he had the old 8-millimeter movie camera, and he would, uh, you know, film us opening our gifts. Now, if he worked 4 to 12, we would have Christmas dinner early. And uh, if he worked uh, Christmas Eve 4 to 12, uh, he would eat before he'd go to work, like at 2 o'clock or 1.30, 1 o'clock. And we would eat at normal dinner time, like 5, 5.30. And if he was daylight, then, you know, all things were normal eat at normal time, he'd be home at 4.30 in the afternoon, uh, what have you. Uh, you know, we always had the traditional Christmas tree. Mom liked to decorate. Uh, she had a lot of nice knickknacks, what have you. Then uh, Christmas Eve, since we were a very small family. Uh, my first cousin's all my dad's family were in Wales. My dad was one of two brothers that came here. So everybody else was over across the pond. My mom was a uh, twin, and she just had one twin sister. So my aunt and uncle, my mom's sister, would come over to the house Christmas night, and we would go to their house after church Christmas Eve for a few hours. My dad would have his traditional one beer, and my mom would have a few whiskey sours on Christmas Eve. On the other hand, my grandmother, my mom's mom, and my great-grandmother, uh, they liked to have a, a few sherries, so they would have a few sherries. But just wanted to share that with you, uh, some Christmas Eve traditions. So when I got married to my kid's mom... She was cool, and she loved the idea of the stocking at the end of the bed. And uh, we kept that tradition for my three sons. And when she got remarried, uh, she kept that tradition and even did it for her daughter uh, from her uh, new husband. So I thought that was kind of cool. So that's some Christmas traditions. Uh, if you'd like, share some of yours. Do a video. Let us all know. Uh, did you have a typical uh, American type Christmas? As I said, mine was blended. Uh, tiny bit of Welsh with the food, but my mom being born and raised in the U.S. to Welsh parents, mom did basically, basically American type Christmas. Uh, Mom always said Santa Claus. Dad always said Father Christmas. Uh, so it depended on who was talking, who was coming to the house. But we understood, uh, you know. But, yeah, um, if you're Italian, uh, Greek, you know, 
Southern. Uh, do a do a video. Let us know some of your traditions. And uh, I'm quite aware of uh, many of them from my buddies. Uh, Western PA is a big, big melting pot. Beaver County, where Aliquippa is, and many uh, of the other towns, is a huge melting pot. Many Italians, Greek, and Eastern Europeans. Uh, I would go to a friend's house. I would have homemade lasagna the uh, day after Christmas, going to see my buddy's guests. Uh, you know, the baklava from the Greeks, the different ethnic cookies. Uh, it, was, it was just a, a huge... Huge world here. The world was at our doorstep here uh, with the um, buddies and, and their ethnic grandmas or parents, what have you. They would get some of the Welsh traditions here, some of the Welsh uh, cookies, tish and lop, which was a, a creamed Welsh type of cake. And they loved that. Um, Welsh cakes, which were a, a uh, small cookie with raisins and currants in it. Uh, a lot of the buddies like that. So, uh, yeah, it was the uh, best of uh, the world here in this melting pot of Beaver County. And I experienced a lot of different ethnic Christmases. When I went to see my buddies, you know, during Christmas break from school, uh, you know how kids do when you're 10, 11, 12, you're gone, you're down your buddies, your buddies are up your house, you're showing your toys, you're playing with your new toys, all that good stuff. And, of course, their moms and grandmas think you're part of the family and they want you to eat. And, uh, boy, we did. Well, I hope you didn't find that boring. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, take care of yourselves. Bye.